Hello everyone, my name is Enrique Garcia and I am a certified SOLIDWORKS application engineer at Go Engineer. In this quick tips video, we will take a look at how SOLIDWORKS simulation calculates resonant frequencies when using a frequency study compared to using a dynamic study. After helping some of our customers on this topic, we at Go Engineer have noticed that there is not much documentation currently available on the subject. Please consider the following example. We have a tuning fork that is fixed at the base and a load applied in compression on the other end of the fork. If we run a frequency study, we get a set of calculated resonant frequencies. Our first resonant frequency is about 111 Hz. If you are planning on running a dynamic study, you would need to calculate and review the resonant frequencies first to be able to use modal superpositioning more effectively. So you create a dynamic study with the same setup and then run the frequency study from within the dynamic study. If you compare the calculated resonant frequencies from this dynamic study, you will notice that they are clearly different. Previously, in the regular frequency study, we were at about 111 Hz, and in our dynamic study with the same setup, we are at uh, about 228 Hz. If I look at the frequency study with no load, you will see that the values are the same as our dynamic study. The reason for this difference is that when a frequency study contains a constant load, the effect of the load on the stiffness of the structure will either increase or decrease the resonant frequency of some of the modes of vibration. This effect is called stress softening and stress stiffening, depending if the model is put in compression or tension due to the load. The most common reason for this is when installing the part you designed and it's bolted in. This loading introduced during the installation may change the modal response of your design. When you calculate resonant frequencies in a dynamic study, the effect due to the loading, such as a prior installation event, is not considered when performing this calculation. In other words, it assumes the model is not pre-stressed or pre-loaded before running the dynamic study. The main reason is that loads and magnitudes are meant to vary in both magnitude and direction when running these dynamic studies, and so it is simply not considered. Here we have a dynamic study that has been run with regularly calculated resonant frequencies natively in the dynamic study. We can see a corresponding maximum stress, and a maximum displacement result of about 6 millimeters. If you're running a dynamic study, I would like to take into account the effects of stress softening or stress stiffening in your model response due to a preloading event. Use the following workflow. 1. Set up a regular frequency study with your loads. 2. Run the frequency study. 3. Copy the frequency study into a linear dynamic study. This will copy the previously calculated resonant frequencies over to the new linear dynamic study. Here I'm choosing a harmonic study, but you can choose any version of a dynamic study that you would need to test with. 4. Do not rerun the run frequency option in the dynamic study. 5. Finish setting up the study. Here we will add a modal dampening of 2% uh, and then run the dynamic study. Looking at the results, you will notice that the overall maximum stress and displacements have changed due to the difference in the modal response from the imported resonant frequencies. There is a higher stress here and a higher maximum displacement of about 8.4 millimeters. Again, perform this workaround if you want to consider any preloading effects in your modal response calculation. If you perform this workaround, recalculating the frequencies while in the linear dynamic study will override your previous resonant frequencies imported from the copy function, and you will have to recopy the original frequency study again. Also, please note that this workaround will only be significant for loading in directions where the model has good potential for deflection and a resonant response, typically for longer, more slender geometries. 
You will not see a major difference in the workaround if your loading is in a uh, direction where the model is thicker and behaves more rigidly. This has been Enrique Garcia with Go Engineer. I hope you found this quick video helpful. If you'd like to learn more about frequency studies or dynamic studies, please take a look at our knowledge base on our website at goengineer.com. Also, we offer professional simulation training both online and in person. Thank you.